Hey, hi, Mick here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can become a social media marketer in four easy steps. Now, a few things you need to know before we start. I'm a social media marketer myself. If you're new to my channel, I'm the proud owner of a social media marketing agency that helps e-commerce brands scale to seven and eight figures. What we do at Mobile C Media, which is my social media marketing agency, is we take e-commerce brands and we transform them into market leaders. And this social media marketing agency generates me well over $40,000 a month profit every single month predictably. And so it's changed my life forever because not only does it fuel my dream lifestyle and affords me financial location and time freedom, but I'm also extremely passionate about what we do every single day uh, because we have a tangible impact on real businesses, on real e-commerce businesses, and we are accountable for very tangible growth of this business. And so that is why I'm extremely passionate about social media marketing and think that it can change your life the same way it did for me. So I'm super excited for this video. If you want to know more, all you gotta do is keep on watching. The first thing you need to do to become a social media marketer is you need to get educated. But before you even venture into the social media marketing space, you need to understand that it's a very vast space, right? There's so many verticals that you can go down. I'm talking about, for example, email marketing, SEO, um, CRO, which is conversion rate optimization of websites, uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, Snapchat ads, TikTok ads, there's so many different verticals that you can go uh, down and it can get pretty overwhelming. And so what you wanna do is first pick a service. There are two questions that you need to ask yourself before you pick your service. Number one, does this service actually generate real tangible money for our clients. And the reason why I say that is because there are services like Facebook ads, like Google ads, where we can clearly tell our clients, hey, here's how much money I've spent for you, right, this month, here's how much money I made you, and here's what the return on your investment is, right? The returns are clear cut, and that is why your value is also clear cut, which means that it's more sustainable because uh, there's no sane business owner that's gonna cut your service if you're making the money. And number two, you can actually charge more for your services because the money you're making them is very, very clear, right? So there's no question as to how much money you're making them. And guess what? If you are making them 100K every single month, right? Then can you charge them 10, even 5K a month? Absolutely. And obviously I could talk about pricing for hours on end. It's not as simple as just guessing, oh, I'm just gonna charge you 5K a month or 10K a month. But the premise you need to understand is that if your returns are clear cut and very, very tangible, then obviously you can charge more, especially if you're making them more. So that is one type of service you can pick. The second type of service are things like social media management, growing Instagram accounts, right? Content creation, video editing, okay? Now these are all valuable services. There's no doubt about that, right? For example, you know, me creating this YouTube video, uh, although there's not a clear return on it, uh, apart from obviously a uh, YouTube AdSense, I create it because I know that adding more value to people, right? Impacting the lives of people and teaching people is also gonna grow my business, right? It's also gonna expand my business and the more eyeballs that I can get on me, my business is gonna grow. Now, don't worry, because I don't have a course to sell you. I only do one-to-one -one mentorship. I'm very selective about the people that I choose to mentor, um, but obviously money follows attention, right? So with that being said, going back to the services, right? These are valuable services. There's no doubt that having a more optimized Instagram profile or um, a more optimized Facebook page is gonna lead to more revenue because the more content that you put out there, right, the better brand image you have online, the more customers are gonna trust you and the more likely they are to purchase from you. But you cannot go to a client and say, hey, I put out this many Instagram posts this week, right, and I made you this much money. It doesn't work like that because there are no clear returns on our investment, right? And so those are the two kind of category of services that you can go down. Uh, and I personally recommend you go down this first route where you can clearly see the returns. And so once you pick your route, your vertical, then you wanna pick a service. Now, the second question that you wanna ask yourself is what is the service that's gonna generate the highest return on investment for my clients right now? Because that is what we're trying to do. We're not romantic about a specific platform, right? We're just trying to make our clients the most money possible for their investment on the ads, right? For their investment on marketing. And so right now, for example, you could say that Facebook ads is the best platform to advertise. That is where the algorithm is by far the most optimized. There are platforms, you know, newer platforms like Snapchat ads, TikTok ads, uh, where sure you could maybe get um, better returns on the front end, but when it comes to the algorithm being optimized, it's just a bit of a hassle, especially for TikTok ads, right? And so I would personally say that Facebook ads right now is the most optimized algorithm, right? 
but you could also pick email marketing, you could also pick SEO, et cetera, et cetera. For the sake of this video, let's go ahead and assume that you pick Facebook ads. The great thing about advertising platforms is that there's always an educational component to their business. And this has actually been a growing trend for a number of softwares out there because they're realizing that if people are more educated about what they can do with our service and how, how to actually do the thing, right? Then they're gonna be more likely to buy from us, to invest more money into us um, and to actually use the service a lot more. And so. When it comes to Facebook ads, for example, you have the Facebook Blueprint, which is a free course by Facebook that actually teaches you the basics of Facebook advertising. And it's an incredible introduction to advertising on Facebook. And I definitely recommend you check it out uh, to get educated on the platform. A second educational resource, completely free as well, okay, that's gonna give you an incredible introduction to Facebook advertising and social media marketing is my YouTube channel. And if you're enjoying this video, you should definitely gently tap the like button because YouTube just finds it extremely sexy when this like gray button turns blue. And so I really appreciate it. it helps out a ton with the algorithm and in all seriousness, I really, really appreciate it. And with that being said, let's go right into the second strategy. The second strategy is twofold. Number one, you wanna make sure you pick your niche, right? What is the group of people that you're gonna be serving? And number two is, once you have an irresistible offer that you can go to market with, so something that this niche is really, really gonna value, right? What is the problem that you're actually solving for them? And what is the value of your solution? Once you have that, then you wanna make sure you start building your portfolio. And the way you can do that is number one, you can tap into your network. What we're trying to do with our network is just find one single business owner. And this business owner does not have to be within your close network. A lot of people just completely block the idea of the network because they're like, I definitely do not have a business owner in my network. What they fail to understand is that you can actually tap into the network of your network. So you can actually ask your friends, hey, do you know anyone in your network who owns a business, right? And I can assure you any business owner, if they're presented a very tangible return, right? A very clear way of growing their business profitably, they're gonna say yes to it, right? So we're just trying to get that, that meeting with a business owner. And that's the one thing that we're trying to find within our network, okay? The second way you can build your portfolio, especially if you're experiencing some kind of resistance to your services from the marketplace, right? Is you can actually offer a test phase, which is a concept that I love because it's a win-win for both parties. And so what a test phase is, is you're gonna tell them, hey, I'm gonna do this service for you for six weeks, right? I'm not telling you to commit for six months or a whole year like most agencies or most uh, marketers out there or most consultants out there, right? I'm literally just gonna do this for six weeks. If at the end of the six weeks, we've hit our cost benchmarks, we've hit our key performance indicators, basically what success looks like for us, right? How we measure success. If what we've done is successful, then we're gonna renegotiate our fee and then we're gonna keep on going, right? If it's not, we'll cut ties, but what's assured is that we've actually made a lot of progress on your account, right? Whether we get you incredible results or not in those six weeks, the thing about Facebook ads is that sometimes it takes a bit longer to see the results. But what you're definitely gonna do is you're gonna set up their ads manager, you're gonna launch their first new ads, you're at least gonna get a bit of an idea as to what the market resonates with, and so it's complete upside for them. Even if by the end of the six weeks, it's not a home run, right? So that's a win for the client, and it's also a win for you because if by the end of the six weeks, you're not getting your client's results as a social media marketer, that's great. Because now you know that if you haven't been able to get them results in six weeks, chances are you're probably not gonna be able to get them results in the long run. And again, I'm not talking about hitting a home run within those six weeks, because as I told you, especially in the type of services where we have clear returns, like Facebook ads, like Google ads, right? The work that you put in initially, the full results and the fruits of our labor is not really manifested until two to three months from our actual work. But if there are no signs that you can get them good returns in those four, six weeks, that's great because you're not gonna go through a partnership where the client is not gonna be happy, so you're not gonna be very happy and you're not gonna enjoy the time with them. And number two, you're not gonna waste uh, the client's money. You can cut ties, take the experience and the lessons that you've learned and go into the next client to get them incredible results. So those are two very actionable ways of building your portfolio. A way of not building your portfolio is offering your services for free, okay? That is a massive mistake that marketers and consultants and service providers make, especially when they're first starting out. And I could talk about this for hours on end, but essentially your perceived value is drastically reduced, right? And so if you offer your service for free, even if you're getting them incredible results, once you actually try to charge them what your uh, service is worth, you're gonna be met with a lot of resistance and a lot of friction because you have destroyed your perceived value by making your service for free, okay? And number two, people have to pay to pay attention. And so when you onboard clients, completely for free, since they're not financially invested into that decision, they're also not emotionally invested into the decision, right? And so they're not really gonna pay attention 
to what you're doing. They're not really gonna help you or, or be very attentive to what you're doing, which is pretty tough as a social media marketer because oftentimes we need the input from our clients, whether that's for approving creatives or approving ad copies, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the second thing that you have to do to become a social media marketer. And now onto the third thing. The third strategy to becoming a social media marketer is to market yourself. So at this point, you have your service, you have your niche, you have your irresistible offer. Maybe you've already built your portfolio by tapping into your network or getting those test phases under your belt. Now you need to go to market and offer your services to your specific niche. And what I recommend you do in this case is number one, you need to identify the places where your niche, your ideal prospects are hanging out, right? So if, for example, you're doing e-commerce businesses, right? They're probably not hanging out on the phone all day, right? They're probably not going to take your cold call because all they do is be online, right? They're building their business online. So the nature that they're used to is online. Maybe you can find them on LinkedIn. That would be much more effective. Maybe even Instagram, email, right? Those are gonna be much more effective than cold call. So you wanna make sure you identify the places where they're mostly hanging out, right? And number two, you wanna pick three different outreach methods that you're gonna reach them on, right? So it could be email, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is once you've done those three different outreach methods and you've done them for, let's just say two to three, four months even, right? And you've actually watched over the results. You've gotten clear on what works. You've actually optimized, right? And you've iterated different subject lines and different email copies and different message copies. What you're going to do then is you're going to discard one of the outreach methods and you're going to hone in on the two winning outreach methods. That's going to allow you to get exponential results because we're essentially tapping into Pareto's principle, which is the 80-20 principle, right? 20% of your outreach is generating 80% of the results. So we're not exactly going to discard 80% of our outreach strategy, but we are going to discard the things that are not working as well. So we can put more time and energy and even potentially resources into making sure that the things we are honing in on are getting even better results. So that is the third thing that you want to do to become a social media marketer. And now onto the final strategy. The fourth strategy is establishing process. This is incredibly important if you want to scale your agency, because if you only have one client, sure, you could get away with not having processes, right? But when you're trying to scale your agency, you're going to have to do a few things every single time. For example, when a new client comes on board, how do you actually onboard them into your ecosystem? When you're about to sign a new client, how do you actually come up with the pricing structure, right? How do you actually determine what to charge them? Also, when they say yes to your service and you're all hyped up, right? How do you actually get them to pay the invoice? How do you actually get them to pay you money for your service and also get them to sign some sort of contract? Finally, although I could speak about this for hours on end as well, um, what is the process of results? This is something that a lot of people completely forget, right? They sign a client, they're all hyped up, right? But how are you actually gonna deliver results for your clients? So you need to have a very specific process to results, kind of like a, a checklist almost for the first week of things you're gonna do to make sure that you set yourself up for success, okay? And after the, the second month, what do you do then, right? There should be a clear process, a clear timeline uh, to results that you follow every single time, right? So by setting those standard operating procedures in place and having processes as to how you do things every single time is incredibly vital if you are to scale your business as a social media marketer and also if you are to have any sanity as a social media marketer. Because imagine you don't have a clear process to send invoices to clients or getting them to sign a contract, right? And you have to come up with it on the spot or you have to do things completely different every single time or you have to go through a long, tedious, manual process every single time you have to do it. So it's gonna allow you to scale, to save a lot of time and to look way more professional as a service provider, as a social media marketer. So that is that for the four strategies you need to implement to become a social media marketer. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you just smash the like button, uh, helps a lot with the algorithm and the whole channel, so I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will check them out. If you don't wanna miss my next upload on social media marketing, entrepreneurship and personal finance, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. And the final plug is if you want to join an incredible free community on Facebook full of social media marketers looking to level up in life and better themselves as an entrepreneur, you can go ahead and check out the link in the description. It's an incredible community of over 2000 digital marketers. So if you want to join that, go ahead and check out the link in the description, go ahead and apply it. And if you're a good fit, we will let you in. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.